What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogashan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. In today's video, I'm going to focus on a question I get quite frequently, which is what kind of projects should I be doing to put on my resume in particular for data engineering? Now, some of the hard things to deal with in terms of having some sort of project on your resume in terms of data engineering is having something that actually is somewhat tangible. You know, if you're building something in software, it's kind of easy to develop some sort of front web page or some sort of application that connects to your back end. In the case of data engineering, the core of the work is done behind the scenes, and so it can seem very difficult to show your overall work. However, I have put together a list of five projects, some of which actually exist and you can look at and look through their repos and some that are more just ideas for you to work on that you could really add to your resume. And especially in the case with the ones that have GitHub repos, they've put these projects together in such a way that actually display what they've done very well, show the different tools that they've used, as well as have some form of final display that you can look at and touch and is tangible, like they've got some sort of dashboard or some final product on the other side. Before diving into the five projects that I wanna show you guys, I wanted to provide kind of the outline of what you should be looking for if you're trying to develop some sort of data engineering project. What are the different components you should consider and you should also include in order to showcase the different skills data engineers have? So here's what I recommend you look for. First, various types of data and data source systems. So you can pull data from things like APIs, as well as CSVs, JSON files. You can scrape it from websites. You can really pull data from all different sources. Don't feel limited to one. I believe it's a really good idea to try to show how you're able to merge disparate data sources, both in terms of the fact that they might come from different locations, as well in terms of the fact that they might be completely different as each data source provides different data issues and thus it's a good idea to include as many as you can or at least two or three as well as showing that you are capable of managing and manipulating different types of data sources from there you need some sort of data ingestion tool now when i say data ingestion tool i'm also kind of referring to your automation tooling as well because if you use airflow that's likely going to be the tool you're going to use to help ingest your data um, if you're just using fivetran or something that is more plug and play, you know, low code in terms of your ELT, then you're really not going to do a lot of the transforms most likely in that tool. It's purely for ingestion and you'll still need to have some other component for transformation. Regardless, all of that data through this ingestion tool or automation tool will go into some sort of data storage system, which is your next opportunity to show off your skills, whether you pick something like BigQuery or even like an RDS Postgres instance or Snowflake or whatever you pick, just pick something that maybe you haven't worked with. This gives you the chance to experience something new as well as show off some skills you might be learning while working with that tool. Once your data is stored, you can then pick some sort of either transformation tooling, uh, you know, you might want to do it just in SQL, maybe something like DBT, whatever it might be in this layer, just something to do that transformation, uh, showing off your logic, showing off your ability to not just pull in data, but also manipulate it, understand how to like merge different data sources, especially if you are working with two or three different data sources, it's really interesting to see, you know, how can you join this data? How can you move it to the same grain, so to speak, right? Like if you've got one data set that's at like the city level and you got one data set that's at the person level, how are you going to manipulate it and manage it to accurately depict what you're trying to display at your final kind of component that you should show, which is data visualization. This will be something like Tableau, but I wouldn't limit yourself to using some pre-made low code option. In fact, I think it would be better if you pick something like putting together a basic Flask site that you can then use something like d3.js or some other form of library to actually develop your dashboarding skills, just because then you're getting some experience coding as well as developing a dashboard. It's a lot more difficult, that part's true, but you can use something like Tableau to act as a mockup and then actually publish some real code version of the dashboard, just because it's something that you can show off more easily when you go into interview. Views. But enough about the high level, let's drill into these five different projects that I have. Again, I think these are five great projects and I've also linked them all below if they have a link or at least an article. I think all of their creators did a great job of documenting their process, which is an important step that you should take as you're going through this process. Don't just develop the project, document it, write about it on Medium and GitHub, show off your work because that's kind of what's going to be important, right? Like if you don't show off the work that you've done, no one's heard about it. But enough of me talking, let's dive into those projects and we're gonna scroll through and actually look at their different 
code bases as well as some of their high level diagrams. So let's get into it. So let's drill into these five different projects uh, that these various creators have put together. The first one is an example where someone scraped both stock and Twitter data and then kind of use them in some sort of data visualization on an actual website. You can actually see their high level here, but I'm going to go to their Git repo where we can kind of go over this more in depth. So the goal of this project was kind of to show some various components of both sentiment analysis as well as stock price and tweets and see if they can kind of correlate. Basically, they did used to have a site. This doesn't seem to be up anymore, but they called it hashtag cash tag. And again, if we look at their high level diagram, I think this is where it really is interesting. And then we'll go back and look at the actual dashboards, but they actually use a lot of interesting components. And I think that's a great point of advice I can give is, you know, even if it's overkill, like I don't think there was any need to use all of these various components that they did, but it probably made them more familiar with things like Kafka, Spark Streaming, Cassandra, HDFS, and, and all of these different components along the way, just again, to scrape Twitter data and stock data, and then try to give like a live version of it, as well as they had a batch layer as well in there. So it really was kind of, I think, interesting in terms of how they put this all together, as well as had this pretty simplistic, but I think, again, encompassing diagram that lets you know, okay, there's a Kafka component, they somehow integrated Spark Streaming for some reason. And that makes it really easy for me then to go above and look through their code and know what to expect. As far as kind of what they displayed, I think I would have liked to see a little bit more correlation. Like I think you could have arguably even tagged in or added in a little bit of like data science work here where they're just kind of counting tweets and then showing the price. Would have been interesting if they would have done something in terms of like trying to calculate the correlation between number of tweets and like the actual change in price, not just the you know current price total. Generally, I think change in price is arguably a little bit more important than like the total price. But if we look at their code base, it kind of all starts with Kafka. In here, they've got a stock producer and a stock twits producer, the twits and Twitter. All this acts as essentially different forms of source data from different places. So for example, stock twits, you'll see that, for example, if you look at the stock twits api.py file, you'll see that they just essentially are scraping this JSON file, which is, again, is a great way in terms of getting different sources of data. They're kind of using a combination of a pretty simplistic get request and then just loading that data, which in reality, maybe they could have just dumped it to an S3. But again, they kind of, I think, went that extra step, thought about, hey, how can we introduce Kafka into this and played with that instead? So I thought that was pretty interesting personally. Again, if we look at some of their other components, like the stock producer, and then go into stock producer pi, you'll notice they're doing something similar, except for now they're getting a CSV file from this endpoint. Whereas again, they're kind of changing the actual path based off the stock symbol. And again, they've got various sources coming in. You'll also see that they will be able to join on some sort of key, which will be the stock symbol. And so that gives you a lot of examples in terms of what this project was. And I think this is a great example that you should probably look into. This next project took advantage of a lot of different components again, where they looked at things like Druid, Delta Lake, Kubernetes, and, and really, I think, gave you a good example of how you might be able to approach a more complex problem. Again, this was probably overkill for the problem that they did. But again, when you're doing these projects, you should be trying to learn, I think, as much in terms of technology stacks and not focusing just on getting the right tool for the job. I think the right tool for the job comes with experience. And if you're just trying to get projects for your resume, you know, I think it's about trying to understand all these different components and what they do. I don't know if it's a 20 minute project. I think that's something I might disagree with, but it is a, I think, decent project that really looks at a lot of different tools. They use things like Dagster, which is this octopus, uh, again, Spark, some Jupyter Notebooks, Delta Lake, Kubernetes, and an interesting visualization tool that I had not seen, which is Superset. I think that's because Druid, and this is one reason I'm not a huge fan of Druid, is a little bit limited on how it connects to external tools, but, you know, it depends on what you prefer working with. So I'm personally not a huge Druid fan, but again, when you're working on external projects, it's kind of fun to play with and see what these various components can do and where their pitfalls are and how you can set them up. So I'm just going to focus on kind of one of the scripts here, but overall what the project creator did here was essentially scrape a bunch of real estate data, get some pricing information and kind of give you some visualizations on pricing in different areas. I think in Sweden in particular, but let me get down to the code. So this project creator essentially was scraping a site that had again, rental and purchase information for housing. And they were literally scraping the HTML so this is a, a more difficult, I think, process in terms of like pulling data, right? Where the previous project, you had things in CSVs and JSON, which is very clean. This is definitely not that clean. You're going to have to go in and actually figure out what information you're looking for. For example, here, if we go and open this next one, they're just trying to get the actual IDs by looking for a specific H reference and then finding that H reference and D kind of start. So they must have looked at the URL and figured out where this information exists. So this takes a little more digging in terms of pulling out that information and they have their full file at solid scraping and it goes a little more in depth because they pull out a lot more information than what they show here in this little snippet. But again, I think they did a great job documenting this project so that you can kind of understand what they did. So then if we scroll down to the UI with the dashboards and more so we can kind of understand what they did and what they were trying to display, they actually got a decent amount of analytics in here for 
if you look at it, not too much data. So I was actually pretty fascinated. It's hard to see in this picture, but you can kind of look through and uh, figure it out yourself in the link below. I'll again, link all these projects below. And you know what? I didn't get this far, but they actually even have their own YouTube channel. Um, I must've missed this the first time I looked at this article. So you can kind of even look and follow along with what they put together here. So just kind of an interesting example. For the third example in this article, I have a typo. I meant to say GitHub. The reason I said Stack Overflow is because there's a similar project done for Stack Overflow. So I will need to go and fix that. But this is on GitHub data, not Stack Overflow data. So in this case, you're not going to have that ingestion layer that we talked about before. It's really just going to be focusing on some sort of analytics that you might be interested in doing because Google BigQuery has actually already kind of scraped all of this GitHub data into their data layer. So you can actually do a lot of analytics on public and open GitHub repos like Felipe Hoffa did in his examples here. You can actually follow them up on his articles. Again, actually, it's interesting. Felipe Hoffa works as a data cloud advocate at Snowflake. So it's it's interesting that he was doing it on BigQuery. For example, he was doing different forms of analytics on GitHub repos. In this case, he was doing tabs versus spaces where he looked at different programming libraries and what was more common. It looks like spaces kind of went out except for maybe in C, but that's you know, maybe something interesting. He also did some stuff in terms of analyzing what code bases get hit more on the weekends, as well as looking at things like comments and issues in different repos and which ones had the most. This entire kind of data set's pretty expansive. Again, there's a lot of repositories you can look at, a lot of stuff you can query. There's a lot of information here that you can really just play with and become familiar in terms of SQL. And I think more complex SQL because this can also have, I think a little more freeform text. So for this project, I think he did a great job in terms of how he actually showcased his work. Again, put together a Medium article. It doesn't take long. At the very least, it's something that you can show or again, put a Git repo. But this is just, I think, a great example where it's a little more open for you to decide what you want to do. Now, I'm going to talk about project five before I talk about project four, because I realized project four is a little more open-ended. Um, it doesn't actually have anything connected to it. It's kind of going to be up to you to actually build something off of it. So project five is another actual real example where someone built this, put it together on GitHub, and then showed case their work. So you can actually go again, go here to project five, and you can see their general work that they put together. Again, I think this is a great example of just putting together what you did and talking about it, even if it's not that complex, even if it seems simple, talking through the various components, I think somehow makes it more meaningful. In this case, the project creator ended up using Common Crawl as their data source, and they were able to pull off tons of data from these various sources in terms of like web history and pull different pricing information to try to detect inflation and calculate if inflation was slightly different than what was being reported. In their kind of findings, I guess they actually found that it was higher for 2019, you know, somewhere in the 4.8% versus 2.3% that I guess was reported. So that's something I think is very interesting. I also like that they actually documented how they were pulling this data and where it was coming from in terms of like, you know, hey, here's how you can actually pull this data yourself if you want to look at it and work with it yourself. Again, they did a good job kind of displaying their overall pipeline, kind of where they were pulling this data from. Again, this, these uh, WARC files. Again, they did a great job of displaying the pipeline and the various components that they worked with, whether that was Spark, Pandas, etc. cetera. Um, just a lot of stuff that you need to get used to working with in terms of becoming a data engineer. Again, the rest of this documentation is a little bit sparse, but overall a good project, especially if you're trying to show off your overall work. I think they did a great job and I think it's a great example of what they were capable of learning and what they're capable of doing in terms of working with various tooling. Finally, for my last example, we're going to be looking at predict it. For those of you who don't know what predict it is, it's basically a place you can go and predict things other than just stocks or like football games or whatever it might be. You can like bet on the outcomes of like elections or financial events. And that's sort of interesting. So let's look at their API. And first, it just kind of leads you to this question. So you can actually say if you wish to receive these data about their markets, you can. And what's interesting here is it's XML data. So you can actually see things like, you know, which uh, party will win the 2024 presidential election. And you'll see that there's already stuff you can kind of scrape about that. And, you know, it's just something interesting you can do. You could then tie in some news data and some other different sources like Twitter again, and really just create some sort of interesting project here. Again, you've got XML data already. You can scrape some JSON or CSV data from some of the other sources we've already talked about. And it really provides a lot of interesting information here in terms of odds. So you can literally track the odds as people are kind of betting on what will occur this last traded price versus best buy price, et cetera. All of these things basically give you a lot of information on what people believe. And then you could try to track that with some sort of external driving factor, again, like news or tweets, and then try to correlate that. I think that would be a great project. If you do do it, uh, please let me know. I'd love to then demo it or show it off on this site eventually someday. So I think that'd be cool if you do it. But yeah, that's another place you can actually pull this data. Oh, I'll actually point out, you can actually pull it by a specific market too. This was all, but you can actually get specific markets, not just like, you know, elections and all markets, you can actually look for specific IDs.
And those were the five project examples that I had for you guys for data engineers. If you want to keep up with all the content I put out, not just in terms of videos, but also in terms of articles, I would recommend you follow my Substack as well, because things like YouTube, Medium, even Dev2, all of these sites tend to limit your audience one way or the other, I understand. So feel free to sign up for my newsletter if that's what you'd like. I try to put out one newsletter a week covering things like startups and technology that are interesting and I think that stand out, as well as different videos and referencing cool articles I've been reading. For example, in the last newsletter I put out, I talked about Greylock BC and five of the data analytics companies it's invested in, as well as talking about the path to a senior engineer, which was referencing the video I put out this week as well. But along with that, I also reference other articles you guys might be interested in, including talking about things like achieving observability for Netflix, rewriting the heart of basically a sync engine for Dropbox, and just interesting articles that I've read that I think people in the tech space would like to know about. Personally, I find that there are so many articles that come out every week that maybe it helps to have just a few of them that really, I think, hit home for me in terms of both either from a technology standpoint or a business standpoint. And with that shameless plug, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this far in the video. I appreciate all of your time and I will see you next time. Have a great day.